Mick, uh, first of all, um, the atmosphere here in the building tonight was about as loud as we've ever heard it around yeah. here. Can, can you address that a little bit? Well, the Kings are really good, you know. <laughs> Mike Brown's a great guy, great coach. Sabonis is pretty good, so I got a feeling they're gonna have, it's going to be rocking again like Vlade and Pedro were out there come playoff time. But, uh, you know, it's nice, I thought, uh, it, to see uh, both of our fan bases support us, you know, uh, so much is made now about, you know, NIL, and NBA and stuff. Um, the college experience, this guy didn't, he didn't have to go to college. He had, he had seven-figure offer to skip college. Jaime could have left and been in the NBA this year, but they value the college experience, which is why we're so good. Um, you know, but anyway, I, I want to congratulate Northwestern on their season. Um, Chris is a friend and a great coach. He made some great adjustments in the second half. Then we countered with a little trap on their pick and rolls. It slowed their offense down. Um, but uh, they got, you know, Boo Booey, Boo, Chase Audige, and their other guys. You know, Nicholson's a guy who didn't get in the games a freshman. So they're everything that's right about college basketball. So it's a great game, two great teams, and we were fortunate. Fortunate to grind it out, even though Tiger didn't make a basket. If you tell me Tiger didn't make a basket, I wouldn't have liked our chances. Um, but he's 12 of 12 with the foul line, so he's money. If you wish to raise a question, please uh, raise your hand. Right here. Tark Patel from the LA Daily News. Coach, last night you said you, you, you would take talent over experience. Yep. And you needed 18 out of Amari. He got you 14, but a whole lot of defense. Can you just talk about his performance? Uh, yeah, what did Amari have? I mean, what do you have, 14? Yeah, I was hoping for 18, but it's my fault he didn't get enough shots. Um, still working on figuring that one out. Um, it's hard to screen. We tried to set a double for Dave. They ran over a guy, and they called a foul on us. I got to see the film on that one. But, uh, you know, uh, I, it, I would always say, you know, you want talent and experience, but I'll take talent. You know, Mari's got, he's got tremendous, tremendous talent. And the, the more he plays, the more comfortable he gets, the better he gets. You know, and he's just as good on the defensive end as he is on the offensive end. Coach Chris Harry, CBS LA, the three that David hit to put you yep. guys up two possessions late was perhaps the biggest shot of the game. Then you see David go down, obviously a scary sight. Just first, your thoughts on that shot and how big it was and just uh, David's status at this point. None of us are surpri – we're surprised when Dave misses because we see him every day in practice. So he had missed two open ones. I like to – you know, everybody was telling him in the huddle, all these guys, hey, man, shoot the next one. Um, so none of us were surprised when that went in. Um, it was his first make of the game from three. So big shot, you know, guys got to make plays. You can all – you know, the, the guys that make plays, the teams that have kids that make the plays are the teams that are going to move on. Um, so – Looks like, you know, he didn't break his ankle, which I was worried that he did. I was having flashbacks to when I had a full head of hair in 2000, uh, in the spring of 2000, running out there and Kenyon Martin was laying there. So, uh, but, you know, it looks like he's got a bad sprain. So, Jaime will give him some of that potion that he used last year. <laughs> you got any of that left? Rub it on there. I'm just happy that he didn't break his ankle. I mean, we, it's been crazy for us here lately. Questions? Scott? Hey, Mick, Scott Miller, New York Times. Uh, Aldij didn't score in the first half, and then he kind of he lit, caught fire in the yep. second. What kind of adjustments? What did you have to do to <laughs> scramble in the second half to keep him quiet after that? Yeah, we lost him a few times on, on offensive rebounds. So, you know, the reason the game was close is they had 14 offensive rebounds. Um, they, they took 15 more shots than us. And I told these guys it's like playing us because, you know, we tried to turn you over. Uh, the turnovers were even. Uh, but, you know, the off, they, they, we lost him on off offensive rebounds. He, he hit one tough when he got to the right on Dylan. But he can make that. Uh, you know, we told the guys to remind us of Johnny Juzang. Great pull up to his right, can make open three. Um, and he was in foul trouble in the first half. So that was a big part of, you know. It's hard, hard for him to score from the bench. But, look, the way they're constructed, he and Boo Booey are, you know, they got to take a lot of shots, you know, the way their team's constructed. So, we held, you know, we held their percentages, you know, in check. I mean, they shot 37% as a team for the game. 
if we'd rebounded the ball, we'd have controlled the whole game. We have a Zoom call. Sir, can you hear us? Yes, Dan Tortora, Wake of Call, DT.com. Coach, uh, in this world of college basketball, we've seen parity a lot over the years, and, and we're seeing it right now in this tournament. Just what you can say about how difficult it is to get into the Sweet 16 and, and how so many teams, no matter what the conference, are giving their best game every single night to the point where we're seeing history this time. Well, look, this isn't new. I would say nothing's new. Um, you know, I'm from the Midwest. You know, I'm getting used to L.A. where the late, you know, it's, it's Dodgers, Lakers. You know, then you get to college and, you know, after that. But uh, college basketball is probably one of the best sports to watch because how hard everybody plays every night. And it's, it's not just this tournament. Everybody just happens to be watching right now. If you'd have been here when we played, or been in Vegas earlier, we played Illinois, it was like a Final Four game, and that was November. So, you know, we don't, we don't play 82 games. So the kids in college basketball, the, uh, the, the intensity, it's so, it's so hard to score. I tell these guys, they're both going to play in the NBA. It's way easier to score up there, way easier. Guys are tired. They went out the night before. They play 82 games. You know, here their scouting report, uh, endless scouting report. You got days to prepare. Kids are trained. They're playing two games a week max. Uh, zone defense helps everywhere. Uh, the intensity. So it just happens to be right now the games are all on the neutral floor. And, you know, the best teams, best 68 teams are playing. So, you know, they're, but to me, it's, it's the best watch. It's the best sport to watch all the time. I'm probably biased though. Jim. Uh, Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. We talked about the similar similarities between these teams. Was there anything at all that surprised you about the way this game unfolded? Not really. I, I didn't think they'd go away. I watched, too, I watched them too much. Um, you know, I saw them play during the regular season because I root for uh, Chris and Brian James. So. Um, you know, I have so much respect for Chris. He could have sat in Durham, North Carolina, and waited for Coach K to retire. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm from Chicago. I'm going to go home and take the Northwestern job. And we're talking about a team that never been to the NCAA tournament. Um, I respect that. He, you know, he ran, he ran into a tough situation. And, uh, you know, I, I, in their team this year, I mean, they're like Penn State. Somebody just told me that, you know, they, they had a shot at Texas. It doesn't surprise me because I watched them play them two overtime games. So they're a grizzled, tough team. You know, they hit some tough st shots. Bowie hit a step back three. Audis hit some tough ones. Um, you know, and their hustle on the offensive glass really bothered us. So it didn't surprise me that they came back at us. In the back, Mick. Uh, Dylan Hernandez of the LA hey, Times. Hey, Hi, how are you? Uh, you know, you've talked about having winning players on your team and stuff, and you know this is now your third consecutive time going to the Sweet 16. Uh, yeah, COVID, you know, COVID. We've, ob we've obviously seen you know the right top seeds getting knocked out of this thing and stuff, and seems like you know your guys kind of consistently in those kind of in the ugly games like this too, kind of find ways to pull things out. What's kind of the difference between a team that maybe steps up a lot of the times and you know like you guys almost all of the time? Well, look, you know, I was fortunate. I worked for two of the best to ever walk the college sidelines. You know, my dad was a Hall of Fame high school coach, so, you know, I was trained on, you know, how to win and how to coach winning basketball. Um, so, you know, you got to defend and take care of the ball and play smart. Obviously, you got to have players. But, we, you know, we, you know, may, force another team to try to make shots to beat you, making, being able to make adjustments and your players follow the adjustment. I mean, that stuff's all important. I mean, it, you know, because like, like Chris was hurting us with the ISO, I told these two start trapping it. We immediately got a steal. Um, so, you, you know, you got to train to do those things. You know, there's just, like I said, man, when I got the job, we spelled, people started asking about style of play, you know, W-I-N. You know, we got to teach guys how to win. And there's a lot of ways to win. Like I would tell you, our transition early is what got us the lead. And I thought that was big because they're such a good half-court defensive team. So, and we, you know, it's not like we had a lot of practice to get ready for that. I was able to talk to the guys about, you know, when we get, we get a stop, we're flying down for layups um, because we don't want to get into a, you know, a game in the 50s. So, 
you know, we just try to do try to teach guys how to play winning basketball. You know, it's just no, and you got to be you got to be able to play situational winning basketball because situations change. Um, you got to play smart. Then it, look, man, it does. Dylan, it, you know, you got a guy to get the ball to Tiger, and he walks up and never, you know, like you know, he missed the free throw against Arizona, and I, and you know, in hindsight, I'm glad. I'm glad we weren't happy coming here, um, and the odds of him missing again are very low. <laughs> you know, because that's just who these guys. You know, that's just who he is. You know, so. Question over here. Players, I would take Oop. players though over coach. Uh, Alex Cervantes, Daily Northwestern for Jaime or Amari, uh, and you Northwestern missed its, I believe, its last 12 of 14 shot attempts. Besides the uh, traps that were already mentioned, was there anything that you think shifted defensively over the last eight minutes? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, on the switches, um, when I was talking to Amari during the game, and and we were switching kind of flat. And I think um, I, I talked to him and, and we talked to coach in the huddle. We, we started getting up, we're switching up into him and, and really bringing up the pressure again because like in the first half, I think we shied away from it in the second half with the just light switching. And then I think in the second half, uh, we picked it up a lot more. Quick one, coach, when uh, Adem, his shoulder, he comes to the sideline. What but was he's the sore. I mean, he, he's, he's extremely sore. Okay. Just so if he gets hit on it in any way, he's sore. Okay. You know, and, uh, the fact that he's out there shows, you know, shows shows you what a warrior he is. And he's really sore. And then so just, it, I mean, he's playing with a brace on. You know, so I mean, he could make he could take he could get a hit in it. Or he could reach for a ball. You know, anything any type of movement like that can it's going to aggravate him, and it's just going to be like that. Was there a discussion on maybe keeping him out of the game? He's going to be sore. I mean, there's always going to be a discussion. We'll see. You know, I don't know what, you know, in details, you know, but it was it, it's going to happen. Just a quick one for Amari. Amari, uh, your explosion has really, the way you elevate is, is really taken the next level recently. I saw it your junior high school, and then I know you've had some injuries and things. Do you think you're – your athleticism is at the height it is now. Like, it, can you talk about that a little bit? Because it's been really great the last couple of weeks. <laughs> you got him all. You, you talking about his athleticism? I, I know he was athletic. Oh, he did win that dunk contest. That's right. He showed me he did. He won this dunk contest back in the day. That's right. <laughs> oh, his. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were talking about his. Well, both of them, it helps It helps when you're not hurt. I would say it's getting there. Um, not where I want it to be, but this will do for the time being. And just any athleticism that I can use uh, for defense or offense, uh, I'll take it. So, Tracy. Was that a Sierra camera? For Coach and for Amari, uh, Talk a little bit about Dylan Andrews stepping up, hitting those free throws. Your fellow freshman, when he, I mean, he's picked by the other And he team. hit the three, too. And, and he hit the three. three, but those clutch free throws, uh, I, I put it to six, I think, with what? Big. Not a surprise. 20 seconds. Yeah, not, not a surprise. Dylan's a tough kid. Amari? I mean, I would agree with Coach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said something to him, though. I saw you say something to him. Him? Oh, no, I was just saying that uh, – I mean, moments like this he's built for. Um, I mean, all of our guys getting extra work. Um, I've seen Dylan shoot thousands of free throws. So to see him go up and hit two and, like, I don't know, like this environment, I'm not surprised by it at all. I feel like you should step up to challenges. So, Mario, you're from Chicago. Yeah. Is this kind of a tough brand of Chicago basketball <laughs> that, you, that you're kind of used to? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it was a nice physical game, so um, – that's something we always invite over here, uh, just collectively as a group, and I'm glad we got the win. Tony Harvey, uh, NBC Sports Radio. Um, I do want to follow up on that. Amari, I don't think you lost a game on this floor yet, you know. Uh, Jaime, what is it like playing with these freshmen? Because, yes, Dylan did hit a, hit a big shot late in the game. Uh -huh. 
I think I told him after the first game, like after you play your first game, you're not really a freshman anymore. Um, we expect you guys to come up here and step up. There's a reason coach recruited you. And that's for moments like these. I, I mean, co coach takes pride in who he brings to this program. And you can see it with the freshmen that he's brought in. I mean, they've just been so big for us. And we wouldn't be in this position without him. So I don't think they're really freshmen anymore. They, they stepped up to the plate. Yeah. We're plus 10 with Dylan in the game in this 15 minutes. Got time for one more question. Hi, man. I know that individual accolades aren't something that you're always about, but tonight you passed Bill Walton on UCLA's all-time scoring list. Given how, <laughs> given how much, where's that pudding? How no. he's now twelfth. Wow, Shit. that's big time right that's there. Man. Time. <laughs> but, I gotta give it to you, man. Man, no, that's insane. That's, that's crazy. Insane. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be sure to tell Bill when I see him. <laughs> But no, that's insane, bro. Given how much Bill has meant to the aura of UCLA basketball, what does it mean for you to put yourself in the context of UCLA basketball greats like Bill and others? Yeah, I mean that's kind of crazy. I didn't, even, uh, I didn't, I didn't know that. But it's funny because I see we see Bill all the time in the mornings. He always does our games at, back at back at home. So I mean, just to be in a conversation with a guy that's so great like that, I mean, it's, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed to be in this position. Um, blessed to play under such a great coach, blessed to go to this institution. I mean, I, I don't really know what to say. That's, that's crazy. Come back for a fifth year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Toodles.